The 12.9 inch iPad Pro form factor is very popular. I personally daily drive a fourth generation 2020 model and I love it. Hell, even my dad wanted one. I actually gave him my third generation 12.9 inch model with the exception of I get to borrow it if I need it for a video. But anyway, with that said, the problem is these tablets are expensive. And if you don't have the budget for them, you know, if you can't spend upwards of a thousand to 1500, then you're out of luck, but not quite though. In the past, I've suggested looking at previous gen versions like the first generation one, which is great, but the only thing is it doesn't have ProMotion and its processor is a bit outdated. But in this case, in this video, I want to showcase the second gen 12.9 inch, which solves a couple of these issues. It goes for around $500 to $600 used and it has ProMotion and an updated processor, etc. So it makes a really great user experience. And I want to touch on it today and show you just how valuable it is as of 2020. But before we continue, I'd really appreciate it if you'd leave a like, comment if you have any questions, suggestions, or opinions as the YouTube algorithm likes that and will help push my content to more people. And if you are a recurring viewer, go ahead and click the bell icon and enable all notifications. It does help the channel out a lot. Before I demo anything with this tablet here, let's first talk about the hardware. So right off the bat, I gotta say, um, comparing this to my 12.9 inch 2020 and 2018 models, uh, this thing is big. It feels like a picture frame. I mean, like you got these bezels here, which just make it feel a bit unwieldy. This is something I didn't like about these tablets back when they were new, but still, I mean, you get this gorgeous display on here with True Tone. It's laminated. It's high resolution. I don't think it's that much different from the new displays at all. Um, it looks really great and of course it has this awesome high refresh rate you know pro motion even with the outdated ish hardware not really actually because this device packs the a10x which is even more powerful than the chip found in the current gen ipad 10.2 inch which rocks the a10 we can do a little quick benchmark here just to show you how powerful it is or how it stacks up to the older and newer ipads so here we have the geekbench scores 844 single core 2306 multi-core so definitely not the most powerful thing on the market right now but still, in my experience, this paired with roughly 4 gigs of RAM pushes the iPad OS 13 and I would assume 14 experience very, very smoothly. I don't see any real lag or stutter, at least regularly. And yeah, I'm very satisfied with the uh, smoothness of the UI so far here. Comparing it to uh, scores from its counterparts, like the third generation iPad Pro, um, it gets like 11, 18 single core. So there's definitely a jump up there. And then, of course, in multi-core scores, um, it's a really big jump. So like with the newer gen iPad Pros, you get like 4,500. So yeah, if you want to do any like 4k editing or if you are relying on this tablet for work You know for really heavy end tasks Then obviously the extra investment the extra cash is going to be worth it for that increased performance But we're going to demo a couple of things today And I'm going to show you just how powerful this device really is in 2020 and also keep in mind here This is more powerful than even a current gen iPad, which is the iPad 10.2 inch if I can find it here See so here we have the iPad 7th gen listed on Geekbench. It gets a 1395 multi-core score So you get roughly like 900 more points in that category with the A10X and then compared to single core scores here, you get 756 with the iPad 7th gen. So yeah, across the board, this device is more powerful than the 7th gen iPad. And of course it's bigger and better in a ton of different ways. One of those ways is with these quad speakers here and I can demo them really quickly with like a YouTube video, you know, some non-copyrighted music, but yeah, this is a staple feature of the iPad Pro line for right now and I love it. So I'll open up YouTube here. Kiss your head when you Yeah, these speakers sound great. I mean, even like three years later, right? This was released in 2017 and, you know, 2020 is coming to a close. I mean, we're like more than halfway through it now. So yeah, the quad speakers in here really do hold up and they are so much better than those in the iPad Air, the current gen one and the iPad 10.2 inch once again. But enough talk with hardware. Let's actually demo some things, you know, stuff that I would do with my iPad normally. So let's open up Safari, for example. I was looking at this article here. Apple's 16 inch MacBook Pros are $400 off. I actually might buy one because I'm going to be commuting to school and just being more on campus. So I'm going to need to work on the go here. And let's just say I wanted to open up a different app. How about YouTube? So I can look up a review or a performance test here. Another great thing about having an iPad 12.9 inch is having this great virtual keyboard. It's huge. It's more life size. So I can look up 16 inch MacBook Pro 5300M. 
right? So then I can find a video on that because I might consider buying a baseline one. And of course, Max Tech has some of the best comparisons and, you know, like performance tests on YouTube. Uh, hi, Max, if you're watching this, um, you've really helped me with my purchasing decisions. But yeah, Sam, like scrolling through here, beautiful 120 hertz, super, super smooth. And then of course, we got a YouTube video playing here as well. What if I want to open up, I don't know, maybe the music app, if I actually had Apple Music, um, I could open it up right here. And we have this little floating window i can bring that off to the side or dismiss it if i want to i can resize here uh, there was a little bit of lag there but nothing really serious but yeah there we go really great experience multitasking and i can of course close that up with the multitasking gestures we can also go over and use an app that i use very frequently good notes and don't worry we'll cover LumaFusion in a minute i didn't skip over it here so i can open up my planner that i usually write in and this is for tomorrow so i can do like sunday or write sunday uh, and then I can write, you know, like check my email plan content. This feels super smooth, by the way. Of course, even though this is older hardware, the 120 hertz, you know, the low latency is just really great. It really doesn't feel at all different compared to my newer gen iPad Pros here. What else can I write? Maybe like go to the mall slash see the boys but yeah there you go i'm planning out my day here and like i said the apple pencil experience is just stellar and it should be with other apps too i'll open up another one that uses the apple pencil procreate and i'll make a new untitled piece of artwork here i can use a paintbrush for example and make use of the pressure sensitivity here very beautifully so there you go i can maybe zoom in and make use of the pencil so sketching soft pastel that looks cool Look at that, there we go. And yeah, I mean, it works really, really great here. Obviously you can zoom in and out. There's no stuttering or lag or anything. I can actually open up um, a real project here. I don't wanna ruin it though. And I can, you know, zoom in and whatever. And yeah, it works perfectly. So if you're somebody on a budget and you wanna do some illustration or whatever, is there a need to buy a newer gen iPad? Maybe if you have the money, maybe you want it, maybe you want USB type C, maybe you want, you know, the future proofness, but this is working just fine for this purpose, I think. And the display, once again, is just really gorgeous as it is. But what about photo editing, you know, Lightroom? That should work just fine. And yeah, it does here. Um, I can open up my library, which is synced across other devices on my iMac and my iPads and everything so I can look at my most recent thumbnail and scroll through them so we got this one this one this one I can make some edits to a duplicate that I have here you know I can you know adjust exposure maybe contrast and as you can see here all of that is done very quickly there's no delay with it you know there's no stuttering or hardware uh, bottleneck it's perfect and once again this display looks really great for this as well it's nice and big you can see what you're doing um, this also applies to Photoshop although I don't use it on an iPad regularly you can you know use this and make some pretty basic compositions so how about I make something new here so I've imported this picture of my cats here maybe I can like try to cut them out so I can like select this guy right here and I don't know mask it maybe there we go um, so maybe I can like move him around transform <laughs> make him bigger do some adjustments as well how about we I, and i've like not used this app so much so forgive me for not being super literate or able to just find things quickly how about i make some adjustments effects smart filter so there's some things that aren't available here but yeah um hopefully this is a you know decent enough look at photoshop and i think that if you are doing some pretty light compositions you know nothing too insane then this ipad should handle it very very nicely but i'm sure you know some photoshop compositions even with this more watered down mobile app can get more intensive and you may benefit from having two gigs more of ram and a much more powerful processor and then of course there's video editing with LumaFusion. Um, I can import some footage that I have here real quick. So I can create my first project. We'll do 30 FPS. How about we just keep it 1080p for right now? Cause I think that's the quality of the footage that I have. So I'll press plus. Um, I'm not gonna watch tutorial cause I'm going to import a video or two. So we got these right here. And how about I drag that to the timeline, drag this to the timeline and drag this on top maybe and we can scrub through that play this back and there's no trouble at all there i'm playing two clips at the same time there's a little bit of lag maybe let's see yeah that's working perfectly uh how about i try to edit the color or whatever so i'll double tap and of course we can adjust the effects here so how about i do i don't know high contrast 
and then I can edit the levels, you know, like increase contrast, increase brightness. And of course I'm doing this just to do it. I'm not actually like trying to make this look good. I'm just making changes for the sake of change. Uh, we can increase saturation maybe, just make it look weird. Maybe make it more yellow and then let's, you know, play it back here. Yeah, so I think this is lesser than 4K, but this was 4K footage, it might be. But long story short, you can place two streams of at least 1080p video with this device here and edit. So yeah, I mean, if you're comfortable air dropping your stuff over or using a lightning to SD card adapter or whatever, because of course there is external storage support with iPadOS with the files app, then by all means, you could use this device and have a great time video editing. Although I will say if you have a more heavy 4K oriented workflow, then you might want to opt for a more powerful iPad. But yeah, I mean, even with this older hardware, you can still get some work done quite nicely. And finally, let's get to some gaming here. I have Minecraft opened up and I have my controller connected as well here. And look at this. This is really smooth. Actually smoother than my experience with my iPad Pro running the iPad OS 14 public beta. Yeah, this is quite nice. Um, I could see myself playing this on this device. Yeah, this just goes to show, even with some older hardware, you can still have a lot of fun here. And the 120 hertz, I do believe, is making a difference if my eyes are not being fooled here. This is a very smooth um, game, so I can punch a cow maybe. Sorry. Hopefully the PETA doesn't get on my ass. Uh, let me jump into water maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Totally playable, totally enjoyable here. And with Minecraft demoed, how about we demo Call of Duty Mobile, which is another game that makes use of a wireless controller. So we'll open this up. I will play as a guest. And yes, I am aware some of these players are bots. I don't think I'm actually good. I'm way better at PC gaming. And even in the realm of PC gaming, I'm not that great. So I've gotten comments like, this kid thinks he's good. And I'm like, no, I'm just having fun. Sniper loadout. Where is everybody? There we go. Helps that your player just kind of shoots for you. Like you don't have to repeatedly press the, the trigger. <laughs> yeah, this, these, these are definitely bots. Or, you know, I have an advantage with the controller. Hi, you don't, don't hide. So yeah, I mean, I'm having fun. I'm immersed in the game. If it wasn't, that would kind of tell you that this experience wouldn't be great. But yeah, I mean, I'm having a lot of fun here. Close up snipe somebody here. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> what am I shooting? There we go. Okay, I want to get someone from far away and then I can say somebody hit. There we go. All right, so that concludes the gaming. Po oh, there we go. Victory. That concludes the gaming portion of this video. And that about wraps up this video here. This is truly a great budget alternative. I've seen these being sold for like, you know, 500, 550 uh, for a very good reason. I mean, the fact that you can get this for half the cost of a newer 12.9 inch iPad and get some of the greatest features that come with that newer iPad, like ProMotion and a decent gaming experience and a great display is really awesome. So I highly recommend looking at one of these on Swappa or eBay or whatever. And if you can pick one up for a good price, you're gonna be really happy with your purchase. And that about wraps things up here. I hope this video was helpful. Once again, I'd appreciate it if you'd leave a like, comment, and of course, subscribe for more content like this. And as always, I'm Noah, and I will catch you all in the next one.